Welcome to another edition of Handicap Born Black in America. I'm your host, Ramon Roan, and this is being brought to you by Judicial Freedom Riders. Please uh, visit us on the web at www.jfrinc.org. Also, please subscribe to the, this channel as we bring you um, relevant and topics concerning um, uh, the civil rights of all Americans. Um, within light of the turmoil that's going on in Ferguson, um, I would like to speak on the importance of black economic independence. That is the title of this video. That's Black Economic Independence. In, I'm somewhat disappointed, to put it mildly, in our black leadership in Congress, the White House, um, our civil rights leaders. Uh, for the last 50 years, when Martin Luther King was fighting the war on poverty, and poverty is an issue, um, we, have, we have actually done worse. We have lost ground as far as poverty is concerned. We have more, there are more people in poverty now than there was in 1965. A problem, I have a problem with that um, because we have lost our way. Maybe I should change the title to that, lost, we have lost our way. We have lost our way in the teachings of Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, that we need economic independence. And that doesn't mean that we could, that, that the United States should take apart portions of the country and just give it to black people. I'm not saying that. But within the communities, I'll give you an example. When I heard that the black voter, voter participation in the last mayoral election was at six or seven percent of black, black population, they make up 70 percent of the population only 6% participated in, in uh, participating in the electoral process. That's a problem. I'm going to tell you why. I'm John Singletary and myself. We've been promoting uh, and encouraging for the betterment of the black economy. And if we, through government contracts, create businesses, support businesses through government contracts, you can also spill over or increase into other types of contracts. So we are encouraging, if we really want to see the black economy having independence and not so much dependent, or not so much dependent upon the government handout, and I know you might say, well, a government contract is a handout. Well, there's been other segments of the population that has been getting those contracts and they do not, and believe me, there is no spreading of the wealth. There is no a, a high tide rise of votes because the African, the, the, the people of African descent vote has not been rising in this country. So what if the town of Ferguson was ran by a black mayor? with a significant amount of black uh, representation there. Um, and what if the, um, what if the, I don't want to say this, what if that the contracts and even the, uh, the city employment was proportionate? What if it was proportionate? Instead of let's say 5% of the city employees are black, what is 70%? of the city employees are black and 30 white. There would be less, I, I believe, I truly believe that if we had less um, poverty, you're gonna see less crime. You're gonna see uh, less murders. You're gonna see a lot of, you're gonna see more marriages. We need um, to change that narrative. We need to bring, we need to bring black economic independence into the black community. And in order for us to do that, running for office, particularly running for mayor or the city manager, 
and having a policy of proportionate contracts. We're not saying that we're not saying that because we're not saying that um, to give get all the contracts of blacks. No, that would be unfair. What we're saying is make it proportionate. The goal should not be for a, a, a community that has seventy percent black. That goal of of, of assignments for contracts shouldn't be fifteen percent. No, it should be. It should represent the community. Um, we also, in the Judicial Freedom Riders, um, one of the things that we want to do is to have the same proportionate assignments where judges are concerned. 90% of all judges, state and federal, are white. They only make up 63% of the population. And federal judges, they are around 80, actually 80%. But you think about this is that, wow, they're there for life. And nine and eighty percent of these judges, actually eighty percent that are selected, eighty to ninety percent are white. So, if we become more proportionate, we will see less poverty in those particular in that particular community, particularly the black community. We must strive. We must make economic, black economic independence our goal. And one of the ways that we can make that our goal is running for mayor, electing that mayor, and that mayor having a policy of proportionate assignments. John Singletary and myself, we are that's our focus here in North Charleston. But what about in Ferguson? What about in your in your city or your town? And you have a large percentage of blacks, but you have a rent, or you have a white mayor or whatever the mayor may be. What about that? You know, it's it's very important. Our local politics are very important, and many times, um, I would say most of the time, we're not concerned about who's mayor. We're concerned about who's president or who's our senator. But who is mayor? Who's running the and mayor? Is it like Boss Hall Keith Summy? That's the mayor of North Charleston who's $66 million in salaries, 60% are to Caucasians. Only, and blacks only get 6%, rather $6, $6 million. And most of the blacks are working sanitation, code enforcement, and parks and recreation. And that's not fair, and that's definitely not proportionate. This has been another episode of Handicap Born Black in America. Uh, thank you for your time. My time is up. Please subscribe. And until we meet again, may God bless you and may God bless America.